Hey everyone, uh, my name is Ty. We're back in my garage, and uh, also in my garage for the first time is the Subaru. Uh, this is actually the first time I've actually gotten this car in this garage um, since I bought it, and it might be it'll probably be the last, like it is, because today we're gonna get ready for the cage, uh, doing some really critical uh, removal over the course of the day. Um, engine has to come out. Uh, the rest of the interior should come out, the dash has to come out, but this video is all going to be about taking out the gas tank. Um, I probably technically, you know, don't have to take the gas tank out. I guess it really depends on who you take it to, I suppose. But the guy I'm taking to this car to to get my cage done prefers gas tank taken out, all the all the fuel lines plugged. He doesn't want any chance that something's going to spark. Uh, plus, on top of that, my fuel tank has been leaking um, when topped off. So... Figured while the car is gone, it'd be a good time to look at that. If not, just consider replacing the whole tank or filler neck, whatever's wrong with it. Good time to look at it and get that figured out. So uh, today we're going to take the gas tank out. Uh, looking into the procedure, I honestly thought it was going to be a lot easier than it will be um, because I just didn't really think about the fact that this is an all-wheel drive car uh, and where the fuel tank is. So. Um, I was looking at a guide online. This, I'm basically just going to do the guide step by step. I believe it was on Nasiac or RS25.com or any of those other forums that you can find. You can see like the DIY gas tank removal out of a GC8. Uh, it's put up by a guy named Letze, I think, L-E-T-Z-E. -E. Um, and I'm basically going to follow that T for T. So by all means, all the credit and intuition that goes into this project goes to him um, or her, whoever it is. Um, and... Yeah, so that's basically the, the guy we're going to follow. Uh, a factory service manual probably has a different guide because a factory service manual typically probably assumes that a factory service facility has access to a lift, which we don't have access to. This car's got to come up. The rear differential has to come out. The rear subframe has to come out. Uh, we're basically going to undo the shocks from the car to basically lower everything down. Uh, we're going to take the exhaust off. we got to take a lot of things off to make this happen today. So... Uh, yeah, we're going to go step by step and hopefully we can make it happen um, here in the garage. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, good luck. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the panels um, that are access to our fuel pump, fuel tank. Um, you probably saw these in the interior video because um, that's when I discovered that I had them. We're going to basically disconnect the electrical connectors, but we're going to leave the, the lines hooked up for now. These are all Phillips head bolts, which, I mean, I don't know how you feel about Phillips head bolts. They're not exactly my favorite. Um, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. So I've got one electrical connector in here. I think this is my pump. And basically, as you push down on, on the tab, and you probably can't see it from there. I probably should get a different camera angle, but I just push down on the tab and pull out done. Now over here we have another access panel. I imagine this is either like a return unit or like a fuel, like the, the bit that tells your computer or your dash how much fuel you have left. just the fuel tank. Alright, I turned the fan on because it's blazing hot out here, so I'm going to have to speak up a little bit, I believe. Uh, the next step is to disconnect the parking brake lines, um, and basically the idea behind that is we're going to need as much slag in them as possible when, dragging, when dropping the rear end down, um, and there's basically three 12 millimeter bolts that hold this cover. Um, um, I'm just basically using my gut here to understand what that means by remove the parking brake lines. Alright, I'm doing a bit of a rare handheld shot because my tripod's not cooperating. Basically, that's what has to happen. See how basically the eyelets there came out? I actually had to disconnect the parking brake entirely, which is fine because I don't really plan on keeping it past having the cage. So, basically, there's these eyelets here that, that basically hook 
these guys hook the, the parking brake lines together and the, the pivot there kind of helps to bias uh, the parking brake in case one, you know, one's locked up or one's worn out or something, you still get your emergency brake. So this is basically disconnected. It still has the electrical connector on it um, for, uh, that tells you when your brake switch is on. So there's that. But other than that, yeah, uh, that's got all these disconnected. Ready to move on to the next step. All right, so I just spent uh, some time letting the compressor warm up because I'm going to be using my impact tools pretty heavily uh, in this removal, I guess. Um, and yeah, if you got the tools, use them. Uh, I don't have a lift, obviously, so any bit of extra muscle I can get to make this a little easier on my end uh, is helpful. That's why I'm busting out the, my impact tools. Um, like I said, if you use them, got them. Uh, now, because of this job, um, I had to be very selective where I put my jack stands and where I jack things because usually I just I'll put jack stands on my swing, my control arms, my swing arms, you know, my knuckles, you know, the rear subframe. I'll put I'll put my jack stands under that. The problem with that this time is all that has to come down, so I can't support it with those anymore. So uh, unfortunately, what I had to do is I had to use just like the the, the pinch welds uh, on the skirts, uh, and frankly, I'm not exactly entirely. Uh, confident in their ability to hold the car um, my my skirts are really rusty and at least they are on the outside where your rocker panels are I don't know that the pinch welds are really in that bad of shape uh, but what I did was I lowered the car onto the jack stand just to make sure uh, everything was fine and then what I did was you can see I, I've got my jack underneath the differential this is like a secondary measure just to make sure and what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna take everything I can off uh, while leaving this setup the way it is. Uh, frankly, if you look at the instructions that Let's See puts out on, on RS25, uh, putting your jack underneath your differential is, is what I'm going to end up doing anyway. Um, because I have to lower the, the whole differential subframe assembly down, and I'm going to do that by using the jack. So it might as well go there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the compressor is full, impact's ready to go. Um, uh, I'm actually going to deviate from the instructions a little bit. I'm actually going to do things in just pretty much any order uh, I, I see fit. So I'm actually going to start by taking the exhaust off um, because I do have to take it off. I'm going to take it off to get the engine out anyway, so I might as well just pull it off the car. Uh, and that's, that's where I'm going to start, uh, getting the exhaust off. And basically, the, the, the stock exhaust you have to take off at the cat deck, but because my mid pipe is actually cut into two pieces from the factory from Pseudo, this is an aftermarket exhaust, I could probably get away with taking it off uh, just the, the, the midsection of midpipe and the axle back. I wouldn't take the cat back all the way off, which is nice, because the cat back bolts suck. Uh, they're, they get the springs and everything. So, yeah, whole exhaust coming off. Alright, from this angle, you can pretty much see everything that has to come off. You can see I've got, uh, that's where the cat back, I'm sorry, this is where the axle back meets the midpipe. Then, Back there, you can see where the, the I guess you call the midpipe meets the, the cat back section. Uh, there's like a resonator or something in there. Again, I'm just gonna take it all off. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna work my way back. I can't quite remember how I put this exhaust on, uh, but typically things come off easier or more easily than they went on. So I'm just gonna start with the very very back of it and just move myself forward and pull the exhaust out. I got another handheld shot. These guys here. These things, these rubber hangers for exhaust, uh, they're a hassle because um, they usually get dry because they're usually touching things that are hot and warm and, and yet they, they never want to come off. Um, I learned this trick from Eric the Car Guy, a uh, great YouTube channel if you don't if you don't know him, go subscribe, he's got great stuff. Uh, spraying with PB Blaster, I mean I, I, I was blown away by how easy this makes everything, but just hit with a little bit of PB Blaster, your favorite penetrating lubricant, and comes right off. So I've hit it with a little bit of PB Blaster, and this, this exhaust system is really tight inside of these. There's, there's two, there's one on each side. So I'm gonna see if I can't force one out. I remember when I put this exhaust in, if I can get one out, I'm golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it goes, and that's down. And it's down. Look at that. All right, I, uh, I failed to film something. Just kind of got ahead of myself. Um, 
You can see here on my driveway, I have the entire catback exhaust. And like I said, things go out, uh, things come out of cars more easily than they go into cars, um, at least in, uh, most of the time. Uh, that thing was a hassle to put into the car. Uh, but basically all I really did was get all the eyelet rubber hangers undone, um, of which there were only like three. Um, and then I just undid the bolts at the actual exhaust manifold. Um, there were only two spring-loaded bolts, and I just was able to pull the whole thing out. Um, why spend time disassembling the whole thing when I can just take it out as one assembly? Um, I can assure you it won't go back in that way, but what matters today is how it came out. So it's out. Uh, we move on to the next step. All right, I'm going to want to take the wheels off now. Um, because I have access to impact tools, uh, I don't really feel concerned that I didn't loosen these before I got the vehicle up. When the vehicle's on jack stands or jack, you don't really want to put any kind of like rotational torque or any kind of, anything that can kind of really jar the thing and push it off into the jack. Especially if it's like a scissor jack around the side of the road, you always want to loosen your own nuts first. Um, especially because, you know, because there's no brakes, especially with power, the, the parking brakes turned off and disconnected it. I wouldn't be able to put a ratchet on this and really get the torque I needed to actually undo the bolts. But this thing, because it's an impact wrench, you really can put out the torque um, uh, without really moving the wheel and just get the lugs off. So, just getting the wheels off. Always keep your lug nuts some place together because it sucks to lose those and not be able to find them. I actually like to just kind of thread them back. Oh my god. I never actually looked at these brakes, these are horrible. Uh, I just throw them back onto the lugs. You can't put the wheel on without them, you know where they're at. They're not going anywhere. And, uh, yeah, just like that. Alright, so I'm looking at the guide uh, that Let's See provides on rs25.com, uh, which, if I haven't mentioned already, it's going to be linked in the description because. Uh, it's a bit more comprehensive with respect to words and steps. I'm hoping my video guide kind of complements that well because there's not really many pictures or anything. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it says rem uh, one of the things is I have to remove the sway bar link on at least one side. And he actually opted to do both of his sides. Problem I don't freaking see a sway bar link on either of these suspension setups. Now, I I'm, I'm imagining what a sway bar link is. Typically, you've got like a C shape. Uh, that goes to a sway bar, it goes all the way across, typically it's mounted something solid so that uh, it prevents uh, swaying, obviously. Um, I would expect there to be like something welded to one of these guys, or something there, but I freaking see nothing. So I'm just kind of imagining being, this is a 95, it's a, it's a first phase, Gen 1 Impreza, that I might just not have it. I mean, this thing's got drum brakes, it's not exactly, you know, a high performer in its class, so I, I guess we're just gonna like, Imagine that I don't have sway bars in the rear, which is totally possible. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna move on. Alright, under there you see the, um, oh, what is that? The heat shield, this guy, for the drive shaft. The drive shaft on top of that, this basically keeps the heat from the exhaust from ruining your drive shaft. So, um, as far as I can tell, there's four bolts. I think they're all 12 mil bolted to the chassis. And, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm hand-holding this. I'm just so close to the ground, my tripod won't even fit. Um, somebody buy me a new tripod. Uh, but yeah, those guys are just gonna zip those out with an impact. And, uh, yeah, that should come down. I somehow managed to get a perfect camera angle on what I'm doing. There's this plate here basically holds the front of the subframe on. There's a 17 millimeter bolt here and then two something smaller over here. Probably 12s? 
maybe 14s. Let's see if I can't gauge them real quick. 12. Yeah, they're 12s. So basically what we got to do is uh, I'm going to take this the bigger one, the one off. Apparently this is the best way to do it because if you take these off and hit this, then it's going to whole plate's going to sit there and spin while you try to undo it. And that's not what I'm going for. But these bolts aren't as strong and big, so the torque on them won't cause it to spin as easily. So this one's coming out first. I managed to get the perfect camera angle by just wedging things together. So if it falls, I'm sorry. size of that thing good lord that's a bolt okay and these guys here little freaking pip squeaks of a bolt and like that you can see our subframe starting to come down which is good but also terrifying also, I'm just I'm just filming one side of this because it's identical to the other side, and yeah, uh, I'm I'm getting a little lazy here. So uh, unless I'll, if I find something that's different, I'll tell you. But it should just be the same as the other side. So you gotta do this on both sides. All right. So I just realized there's another heat shield in my way. Um, it's basically the one that was covering the exhaust from the gas tank. Um, I, I can't really tell if it's alluded to in the instructions or not, but I'm not really here to criticize. I'm just here to kind of like get this thing done. Uh, so it's, it's definitely in the way because it's underneath the gas tank. So uh, I'm just going to assume it's also 12 millimeter bolts holding that in. But it looks like there's probably about four that are holding it together. So uh, I'm going to take that down off as well. You can see it's quite rusty. So uh, Impact's got a fresh charge in it, and we're going to have at it. Well, broke that one off. I think that one came out as a bolt. Yep, that one's good. That side's, well, that's just rusted. So, whoops. All right, so, the conclusion. The heat shield is free from the chassis. Uh, which means it'll come down with the sub-assembly. I can't get a disconnect from the sub-assembly yet. We're kind of stuck there, but I think it'll be fine. So we're going to move on to getting the subframe disconnected from the chassis. Okay. All right, those are the bolts that got to come out next. Uh, those basically connect the subframe to the actual frame of the chassis of the car. They're two 17 millimeter bolts with a bunch of washers and bushings and such chilling out in there. Uh, so I'm just gonna hit with an impact. I actually have to use a new tool. I have to use a wobble extension. I don't know if it has to be a wobble extension. It just happens to be a wobble extension, but my impact will not fit up in there. So I'm gonna use an extension for the first time. Um, we're gonna see how well that works out. Uh, I imagine there's some serious torque on these. So yeah, we're gonna find out pretty quick. They're pretty roasted, but I mean, I'm just trying to get this thing back together to get it off to, to Jerry's. So this is what it is. Alright, so I've got the uh, the rear subframe disconnected on both sides from the chassis. It's pretty much just being held up by, I guess, the struts and the jack and a couple other things. Uh, you can see right here I've got this, this flange um, that holds some brake lines. you got steel coming in on the right to the uh, to that guy. That's basically the, the mount where the rubber line hooks up. And that hooks into the uh, the brake caliper, or I guess the brake drum, whatever it is, here. Um, since this is flexible, I'm gonna actually going to disconnect this and try to get as much slop as I can. There's two, two 10 millimeter bolts right there. I'm just going to quickly undo those. And uh, I probably won't actually be able to film that. It just trust me, I'm doing it. 10 millimeter bolts. All right, in there you can actually see the top of my uh, strut tower. That's where my coilover bolts into the chassis at. I'm actually undoing these. I'm, I'm sorry for the camera work today. It's just terrible. Um, I'm doing these by hand, um, mainly just because um, I can't really get my impact in there with the glass. So. These are 12 millimeter bolts. Because of the way gravity works, the, the, the chassis is riding on top of those studs. So by disconnecting these, we aren't inherently letting anything fall out of the car. We're just trying to uh, 
to be prepared to let the thing swing down. So 12 millimeter bolts. I'm using a um, a half inch drive with. I'm, I'm coincidentally using my impact socket. It just have, it's a little deeper than my normal 12 mil. So yep, that's what I'm doing. All right. So as far as I can tell, I'm pretty clear to just go ahead and start lowering this thing. I've just disconnected the struts from the strut towers. Uh, those 12 millimeter bolts poking through inside the the cabin. Um, I disconnected the brake lines from the chassis, giving me a little bit of extra slop. Disconnected the uh, the front of the subframe. I've disconnected the rear of the subframe. Uh, I've removed all my heat shields, uh, removed the exhaust wheels. I should be pretty much good to go. So I'm basically going to slowly, slowly lower this down and keep an eye on uh, things, you know, hanging clean. I don't want to ruin any brake lines. I don't want to ruin anything in this process. Just nothing I have to fix. So I'm just going to slowly lower this guy down and see what happens. Brake lines are clinging to the axle somewhere. Oh, boy, that again. Yeah, just by slowly bringing the thing down, we can check and make sure everything's going down pretty well. I'm actually quite surprised at how, so far, this has been quite carefree. Uh, the question is, have I raised the car enough and put it on jack stands to accommodate getting that fuel tank out with how it, with this thing coming all the way down to the ground? Now, naturally, you would presume that I can't get the thing all the way down to the ground because uh, the jack will be underneath of it, and that's accurate. Plus, there's always also other things that might get in the way. So, we, how far down this thing comes is really going to determine whether or not it's going to be easy or hard to get this thing out, uh, to get the gas tank out. All right, so here's the situation right now. This thing's basically at a point to where it's barely touching the jack. It's just slowly finding its way down, and that's fine. So basically, whoa, there it goes. What gave? Uh, something gave. So basically, let's see if this thing comes down any further. Yep. So basically, it's the jack's all the way down. It's resting on the jack. So the fuel tank. There's two straps holding the fuel tank on. I gotta get this thing as low as possible while also being able to wait or lift it back up and put it back into place. Um, that's the struggle. I'm thinking maybe if I got on the lip, right, and just just pulled the jack out from underneath it and tried to jack it back up by the lip later, I'd be in fair shape. Um, and then I got this huge, um, this huge hump on the right hand side. That's the hurdle. That's going to be the hard part to figure out. Because I got the sway bars, or the, the control arms, the swing arms on the right hand side, and both, both sides here to prevent that from get, coming out. So it's got to come out from the back uh, through that hump. I can guarantee you that it's not down far enough, uh, which sucks. But I think if I can move this jack out of the way, then I'd be fine. So that's my goal, try to get this thing all the way on the ground and then worry about getting it back up later. So, uh, so I got the subframe on the ground. Let me tell you what I did. Um, so when you saw it earlier, I had jacked the thing up by the uh, the differential, which is a safe place to jack a car, because uh, that differential is hooked right up to this subframe. It should be fine, not really a problem. But the problem was, is that my jack is not low profile enough to bring it all the way down. Um, and that's the lowest point of this, this carriage. So what I did was I actually jacked it back up and put jack stands underneath of the 
the control arms that go from the differential uh, subframe assembly to the knuckle. I then let them rest on the jack stands, and I put the jack on the lip of this subframe, which would not be a good place to jack the car up by, but since I'm only the only weight is of the subframe itself, it should be fine to jack it, you know, should be able to support its own weight on that lip. I brought it down, and I was able to get basically the subassembly resting on the knuckles, and, um, and now I have a lot more clearance. So now I'm going to go for the 14 millimeter bolts that hold the fuel tank straps in the rear to the chassis. Those are going to swing down and I'll be able to basically this thing, it's practically empty, <coughs> should be easy just to kind of manhandle about uh, just to get it to where I need to get the lines, the extra electricals, it should be good. Alright, so I got the fuel tank dislodged. Uh, again, 12 millimeter bolts to kind of hold the straps in. You can see the straps undone right there. Um, of course, that tank's probably been there for all 280,000 miles this car has enjoyed. So it kind of, the strap sticks to the tank a little bit. Um, now we just gotta worry about lines. I'm just kind of looking to see, I see some lines right there coming up. Um, and there's some, oh, there's the interior exit holes as well. So we're gonna use everything we have to our advantage here. Um, we also have to worry about the filler neck. Oh, are you joking me? I'm getting a call right now. Filler neck is a concern, but that filler neck is hooked up by a rubber attachment, so we'll worry about that later. And then, uh, I think we're in good shape. Alright, YouTube, uh, this is where I realized I've made a mistake. Uh, all too late in the process, but we gotta do what we gotta do. These are the fuel lines coming out of the fuel pump. Um, th this system is very likely pressurized uh, to many as much as 40 pounds PSI. 40 pounds PSI. ATM machine, jeez. Um, what I should have done was should have pulled the relay or pulled the plug and then ran the, ran the car so that way it would run itself dead, uh, basically relieving the fuel pressure. I did not do that. Uh, so this system is very likely pressurized and uh, people say online, you know, you can remove the fuel tank or, or remove the fuel cap. That'll relieve the pressure. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, I'm basically going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, I've got the, the clip off already. You can see it off to the side. I'm going to basically hold the line shut with my pliers as I pull it off and just try to keep my entire head out of the car while I do this. Um, fuel's going to get around. I, I expect that. It's reasonable to expect that. But um, I'm just trying to avoid getting it in my nose, my mouth, my eyes. Uh, I mean, once I let go of it, the fuel pressure will be relieved. So uh, here's hoping I don't die. So wish me luck. I got the scary lines disconnected which come from the fuel pump, so I imagine the fuel pressure is relieved. I can't imagine any place where there'd be fuel pressure next uh, with a fuel direct line disconnected, so those are disconnected, ready to go. Uh, there's some hard lines. I don't know if you can really tell, kind of just running around the fuel tank. You can see some back there in the background. Uh, basically, they're hard lines. I can't really do much about it other than disconnect the soft lines they connect to and hope to, that the whole thing will fall down. Uh, I'm going to worry next about getting the the uh, clamp around the filler neck disconnected, and that's just a, like one of those, you know, traditional hose clamps with like a 7 or 8 mil or maybe even a 6 mil job on it. It's quite rusty. It's just a hose clamp. Um, that will basically give me access to the next tube. I don't know what that next tube is. Maybe it's just like a vent or something. But there's another... Uh, dang, see that? There's like a second one. That's got one of those irritating pinch style hose clamps I gotta take off. So I gotta get those off. There's some of those hard lines I was telling you about. There's some more on the front side that make things really difficult, but the three fuel lines, as far as I can tell, that go up to the engine bay are coming on the driver's side. And that's, I gotta find out how to disconnect those from the tank so the whole thing can come down. But I think the current hurdle is getting these hoses off so the thing will come down on the rear, bring these things down, bring the gas tank down on the rear side, giving me better access to those hard lines. So. Uh, I'm going to take care of those next. Alright, so we've made some progress. Um, the fuel tank is a little lower. You can see that the lines on the back are disconnected now, the big ones, the filler neck, and the whatever, I don't know what that other one is. I actually had to disconnect the rubber connector between the tank and the filler neck at the filler neck, because I just I think the, 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 the hose clamp or whatever on the fuel tank is a little rusted. I can't get a good socket on there. The other one was just one of those pliers, snap style, and it came off with a little bit of help with PB Blaster. But now, 
now we gotta worry over here. Let me brighten it back up for you. These lines, these hard lines. Two are snap style, one is like a threaded style uh, hose clamp. I'm just gonna disconnect them from the soft lines right here. And that should be the last of what I have to deal with with getting the lines disconnected. The one power connector is already disconnected. Uh, and this thing should be free pretty quickly. So I won't worry about these real quick. Again, hoping nothing's pressurized and uh, yeah, should be in good shape. All right, so we got those lines disconnected. There was a lot of fuel loaded in them. So if you're doing this, make sure to keep an eye out. Um, maybe keep your eyes shut actually while you're doing this. It wasn't like pressurized, it was just fuel. Um, and you imagine a whole line full of fuel is a lot, so gravity applies some pressure there. But it's not like they were like, you know, jets, but like, there was fuel line, or well, there was fuel there. So everything's disconnected. Uh, the only thing left I see that needs to be done is the electrical connector that runs to the fuel pump is actually clipped to the, uh, it's actually clipped in a couple places to the tank. But that's that. And now we're, we're disconnected. So uh, with a little bit of luck, a little bit of effort, we should be able to pull this thing. Uh, all the way out. So here we go. I'm gonna try pulling it out now. See how it goes. Try to get all my stuff out of the way. My lines, my air hose, jack, jack stands. What's heavy? Again, watch out, there's always fuel coming out, so. I mean, as far as I can tell, we're disconnected. I just gotta work on getting the everyone fuel tanks out obviously uh, I'm exhausted uh, so I'm basically gonna uh, if you were doing this you, were, you would have some intention to put another fuel tank back in and thusly reassembly is the same as renewable but I'm not doing that because I'm just taking it out for the sake of the cage put it I'm not gonna put it back in for a while so I basically had to bolt this thing back together without a fuel tank in it which probably be easier than trying to mess wrestle this thing back into shape uh, so that being the case, um, I'm pretty much going to wrap this video up. I don't, I'm not going to film me putting it back together without a fuel tank in it, because that seems kind of uh, purpose specific, something you probably wouldn't care about. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to bolt everything back up uh, and maybe take a good long break and, and look at my life. Um, and then I'm going to work on getting the engine out, the rest of the interior. So uh, sorry if this video wasn't as hands on as I would like it to have been. Uh, camera angles were a bit tricky on this one. so. Uh, I'm going to narrate everything in case, you know, YouTube doesn't like the music I was playing or something like that. So, I'm going to make sure to be thorough in everything I did. I just don't want to, like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to short you guys on anything. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got for the day. Uh, I might work on this later tonight, but it'll be a different filming session altogether. So, uh, yeah, nevertheless, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for, you know, sticking around on this project. Uh, it's coming together. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I drive to film this while I do it um, is, is further perpetuated by the guys I know that you are, are watching. So, 
Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if, you, if you're subscribed, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, consider it, because this is one of my ongoing projects, and maybe you don't like it. I don't know. I liked it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.